So today in, in session one, we are really talking about preparing thoroughly, right? Preparing thoroughly to not procrastinate, right? Next week, we're going to be talking about creative procrastination. And then on the third week, we're going to be talking about a sense of urgency, right? Putting some time pressure on yourself. And even today, when it comes to the Pomodoro technique, which is what I'm going to talk about, preparing through the Pomodoro uh, is a two-page PDF that I already chat. There's also an email that went out, two emails that went out with the Pomodoro uh, uh, preparing PDFs, two-page PDF. Pomodoro is time pressure as well. So we're going to make sure we cover uh, those things today. But just a couple of highlights. I'm going to grab uh, something here so I can take a look at just a couple of highlights on preparing thoroughly. One, you want to have some type of time pressure to make you do that. So we're going to discuss the Pomodoro uh, in that space. So how can you use the Pomodoro to plan thoroughly or prepare thoroughly? That means that you'll be able to basically Pomodoro to plan, right? We think the Pomodoro is just getting through our different exercises and work that we need to get to our focus for, but you can actually use Pomodoro to set up your Pomodoros, right? If that makes sense. Uh, to you here uh, as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about, one of those things. Another thing we're going to be talking about is, right, having everything in place before, having everything in place before you begin. So not working, and as you're working, saying, what should I be doing next? I have it properly prepared, right? We're going to be talking about organizing your physical desktop, right? which means right this space right here where I'm at, right around my physical desktop, making sure that that's good, but also making sure that my computer desktop is good as well, right? And I've, I'm not going to touch a lot on the computer desktop only because I just did a three-week training on organizing your computer desktop, and um, you can get access to that, but you'll go into detail, but pretty much you want your computer desktop to be clean outside of your software that's on your computer and the actual files and folders that you're using for the particular product that you're working on right now today, right? You want, there, you want your office desk to be the same way. But I'm going to give a little bit more detail on the office desk here today. Um, planning one task at a time, right? Planning one task at a time. That's properly preparing, right? Thoroughly preparing and saying, look, let's work on one high priority item at a time. All these little miscellaneous items that you have holding around, I guess you can take care of certain things when you're taking breaks on your Pomodoro, uh, things like that. But you need to have main focuses, big main focuses, which is the frog. That's the frog you're eating. Everything else, uh, like you'll learn in a book, eat that frog, is tadpoles, right? Does that make sense? We're also going to talk about making sure you have all the things you need to have, like logins, passwords, notes, data, external drives, all of the items that you need, websites that you need to do research, anything that you need to move forward on your project, you want it when you start. That's preparing thoroughly, right? To make sure that you don't have to get up to go get things. You don't have to do research before you do the actual physical work that could be income producing activity. You wanna make sure all those things are in place ahead of time. Uh, we also wanna make some time uh, creating a success work area, right? And I'm going to dive into that a little bit on the handout that's going to talk about organizing your physical desktop. I'm going to talk about how to create an environment for success in your office, right? And I'm going to give you a couple of bullet points here, right? So spend some time creating a work area where you will really enjoy spending time. Declutter industrial area. Improve your lighting in the area that you're going to be working. Man. Create an office environment. So you want this to not be a personal environment, but an office environment. So uh, you're going to see on the handout, right, that you already received. So you guys already have the handout. If you don't have it, you will see the link. You saw the link in the email for this replay, things of that nature. You're going to see on there what I mean by this is business, not personal. Right? So your kids graduating. Uh, your last vacation, your cute pets, your grandbaby, maybe your baby if you're young enough to have little ones running around the house. Those things don't need to be on your office desk. They need to be on visualization, visualization boards, what we call vision boards, realization boards, which are boards that you create to show that your visions came to reality. 
right? And motivation boards. That's where you put that stuff. They can go in your office, but they need to be on boards that you can look up and see. This is what motivates me. This is these are my goals, these are my visions, and then here's a realization of the things that I've already accomplished because I've been doing vision boards. And as my visions come to fruition, I now put them on a realization board, right? Does that make sense? sense to everybody so that's where you're going to put those type of things at you're not going to put them on your office that's your office desk is for office tools and you should have space to do your focus work at your office desk right yes yes so getting an ergonomic keyboard getting an ergonomic office chair those these are things that are going to keep you from procrastinating right uh keeping water in your office so that you don't have to keep on getting up to get more water so Keep some bottled water on your office or water filter, far water filter close by, whatever the, the, your circumstance may be. No matter what you drink, whether it's Gatorade or water or any other product, make sure that you can access that unless you're going to get those things when you're taking your breaks, right? Um, getting a physical alarm clock, not just your phone, because it may be some times you're working on some really heavy um, focused projects where you're saying, I'm going to leave my phone out of my office. And if your phone is your digital alarm, you want to be able to take that phone, put it outside your office, unless you're going to put it on focus or something. Take your phone outside of your office and have a physical old school alarm clock that you can use to do certain things. Uh, placing air fresheners in your office so that it stays smelling fresh. Or ordering a do not disturb sign so people who are in the household with you will not disturb you while you're working. Getting a comfortable or missing the ergonomic chair. Um, having a coffee or tea warmer. So that was key for me. Um, I was gifted a coffee warmer because I kept on getting up right every 15, 20 minutes to heat my coffee back up because I drink my coffee slow. I kind of sip on it and it'll cool off unless you have it in some kind of insulated container. I normally use like regular traditional coffee cups, right? With different sayings on them. I've got things branded with my company, things branded with companies that I'm contracted with, things of that nature. Uh, so I use open top coffee cups, ceramic coffee cups. So sometimes the coffee will cool down. So I have to go down and heat it up in a microwave because my office is upstairs on the second floor and the kitchen microwave obviously is downstairs in the kitchen. So I would have to go up and down the stairs, which is lost time. So I was gifted a warmer. So now I put my coffee on a warmer and my coffee being on a warmer, I never have to worry about heating it up, right? Key things, right? Uh, getting a, a workflow music station or pandora or apple music having a list get you a motive motivational music list so when you're not really in the mood you can get yourself in the mood right so procrastination guys and i learned this from uh, mel robbins right uh taking some mel robbins training procrastination is a habit we've got to learn how to break that habit and how to learn uh to know when it's being triggered and how to how to avoid the triggers because this is procrastination is not about us not having work ethic. It's not about us not wanting to do a task. It's about we're stressed out about something. And that stress is preventing us from concentrating or focusing on the particular task that we need to do. That's in a nutshell, right? So procrastination is a habit. So hopefully these things that we're going to talk to you about, and again, we're not going to completely solve all of your procrastination issues in this three-week pregame. That's why I call it a pregame. Right. If you really want to really get through all of your challenges when it comes to procrastinating, being a part of the book club, being right, even if you're saying I just want to be in episode one, which is fifty nine dollars to just go through the book, eat that frog and really learn the 21 ways to stop procrastinating. Right. It's fifty nine dollars worth you stopping your procrastination cycles. Right. So even if you don't join us month to month on the book club from this point on, which we would love for you to do, where you can always pay $59 per episode. And that means per episode means the book that we're covering at that current time. So the first book is going to be Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy, 21 Days to Stop Procrastinating. And this is what this pregame uh, here is for. So taking action, getting 80% correct, not 100%, right? Once you get an 80% right, man, put it out there. Right, put that focus work out there at 80% done. You can course correct right down the road once it's out there. Put that finished product out there because your your um your critics, your customers, your co-workers, your business partners, right? Your friends and sometimes your enemies will help you fix course correct that other 20% once you put it out there. So sometimes when I'm getting emails set up, I, I 
I don't have the time to critique everything. My personal assistant or my virtual assistant, I should say, doesn't always have the time to critique every single thing. So a lot of times my virtual assistant will simply be like, look, I'm going to get these emails out there. If you see something wrong with it or somebody says something bad, just let me know and I'll critique the next set of emails that go out by just changing whatever's wrong. And a lot of times they'll do that and I'll get emails or I'll get text messages. Hey, Dunbar, you said Tuesday, you meant Wednesday. Right. Hey, Coach Dunbar, you said that we was doing it once a week, but you said twice a week. Right. You said every Tuesday, but it's every Saturday. Things like that will happen. Right. Just general mistakes that are very right. Correctable. It's a correctable word. I'm not sure. Right. Correctable. Um, if that's a word. If not, y'all know what I mean. Right. When that happens, I just let my virtual assistant know, hey, look, I got a couple some feedback on these things. Fix these these errors in the on in the email. A link may go to the wrong place, right? I may have a link that goes to one sales page and it should have gone to another sales page. So these are general things that will happen when you put projects out there, when you put things out there to the general public, whether it's internet marketing, whether it's a product you sell. We know some things you can't do that, but there's a lot of things that we procrastinate because we keep trying to make it 100% right. Right, we try to we try to make it a hundred percent good, and really, if you just do eighty, follow the eighty twenty rule, put it out there where it's eighty percent good, and the other twenty percent, let your critics, let your customers, let the people who see it say, "Hey, you need to fix this." Now you you've created a situation where we call it crowdsourcing. People are now giving you the feedback to help you correct those things. So hopefully, that's helpful to everybody. So those are some things that we're going to be talking about. I know that was a lot. Right. Everything we're not going to cover in detail, but I want you guys to just understand, prepare it thoroughly and what that means uh, in that in that space. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen uh, so that you can look at these two PDFs and I'm going to show you what I mean by the Pomodoro moving in a place to help out. So just give me about 10 seconds here to get my my screen shared and we'll be on our way with this. So I'm going to go to the first one, which is going to be the Pomodoro. And I am going to set this to present so it covers my whole screen. So you all should see my full screen now. So for those that don't know what the Pomodoro is, because I know some of you all are like, what does this guy mean by Pomodoro? Um, I'm going to explain that. I didn't want to explain it to you until you were looking at something. So uh, hopefully I didn't throw you too far off the topic by mentioning the Pomodoro technique. Uh, so um, for those who follow me at all, who've been with me with any coaching sessions or goal setting sessions, anything like that, the Pomodoro comes up a lot. And the reason why I talk about the same things over and over again is because they're all in the same space when it comes to productivity. As a person that I consider myself to be a productivity coach, a goal coach, I help people move to the next level, double their income, grow their business, get out of some funk that they're in because their business is not doing what they should, right? Which is all part of mindset coaching because all of this growth and productivity and goal setting is all about setting it in your mind first. So the Pomodoro technique is a technique that's used to help you compartmentalize your tasks and things that you need to do and to make sure that you're taking proper breaks, which and proper breaks are, are real breaks. So you will hear me mention that when I say break, I say real breaks because I want people to understand that real naps, right? Power naps, 25 minute naps every day. That's a real nap, a power nap, right? Oprah Winfrey talked about those years ago, right? You hear a lot of gurus talk about proper naps being proper naps being power naps. Real breaks are M-O-D-S. So always make sure your breaks have M-O-D-S in them. The M stands for moving. When you take a break, you should move. Our bodies are not meant to sit still for hours upon hours. We should be moving. So get up from your office desk or wherever you're working at. Get out of that work environment and move. Walk around the block. Go to your patio. Go to your front porch. Walk to your mailbox if it's not right in front of your house. Get up and move, right? Even if it is right in front of your house. Maybe, maybe I should say that. Even if your mailbox is in front of your house, right? Get out the house. Walk to your mailbox. Get your mail. Go to the kitchen, get, get you something to make you a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, whatever your, your drink of choice, right? Uh, prep some food, whatever you need to do, but, but move around. So the M mods is move. This is a real break, right? The O stands for outside. Go outside if you can. Now, obviously, we've been looking at the uh, the news uh, here, here lately, and, and, and it's been a cold front going on all over the place. So obviously, if it's 13 below zero where you live at, you don't want to go outside. 
But if you can go outside, go outside, right? That's the O in mods, right? Moving and then outside. The D means detach. That means that you need to detach from whatever project you were working on. That does not mean attach to another project. That means take a real break. That means that you should be moving away from work. You should be doing something that's social. You should be doing something that's separate from work, right? Talk to one of your kids. Talk to your significant other. Talk to your best friend, right? Socialize with a neighbor, right? Play with your pets if you got pets in the house because you can socialize. That sounds weird. There's some people who don't have pets. I don't have pets, but I know a lot of pet lovers. And, you know, when you're doing dog talk the same way you do baby talk, you're socializing, right? It's you taking your mind, detaching from that work that you're doing. So detach, that's the D. So going over it again, M-O-D-S. M is moving. So you need to move away from your office desk. You need to go outside. That's what the O stands for. You need to detach from your work, right? And then you need to, the S stands for socialize. You need to socialize. You need to socialize with another person, with a pet, do something, talk to somebody and don't let the conversation be about work. That's what MODS, right? And I know that wasn't part of the training, but I can't talk about real breaks without talking about what a real break is because that's kind of misleading, right? So a real break is M-O-D-S. That's how you remember. That's the acronym for a real break. Now, the 25-minute focus preparation, as we move into the book club, as we move into going into the book, Eat That Frog, I'm going to go a lot more in depth on how you can alter the Pomodoro technique to where you're doing 25 minutes or so 52 minutes or so 112 minutes or whatever. I'm going to show you how to create the correct focus time in your chronotype, meaning how you work, what, th what bird are you, are you a third bird, lark, or owl, right? That's a conversation for a different day, but understand that we're going to show you how to manage your energy, not just manage your time. Those are the things that we're going to do with the book club. And that all starts right with us going into that pomodoro technique because i'm going to talk about pomodoro and electronic calendaring and taking real breaks and taking real naps throughout because that is all part of the proper balance when it comes to not procrastinating which is what guys a habit right procrastinating is a habit so we want to make sure that we get through those things properly so remember a pomodoro is 25 minutes of focus time five minute real break 25 minutes of focus time, five minute real break. 25 minutes of focus time, five minute real break. After you've done that three or four times, ran that cycle three or four times, now you can take a 20 to 30 minute break. Now, I pretty much said, right, what's going to be on this sheet right here that we're going to go over. So, see here, what is the Pomodoro technique? So, you have this in writing. You can take a look at it. This was free of charge. Gave it to you guys as part of the, as, as part of the pregame, right? Steps to take to prepare thoroughly using the Pomodoro. These are steps to take to prepare thoroughly using the Pomodoro. Because you can use Pomodoros for all kinds of focused work, right? Choose the preparation action steps that you would like to focus on and write them down. So what preparation action steps do you need to take? What do you need to get together? What resources do you need to have? Who do you need to talk to? What websites do you need to visit? Do you have the data? The, 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 um, the uh, writing tablets where you have your information, right? Do you have the people to call if you're going to make sales calls? Do you have your pitch in front of you, right? Do you have a teleprompter to say your pitch if you don't have it in front of you? What do you need? What, what preparation action steps do you need to have that need to be put on your electronic calendar, right? All you guys using the day planners and the writing calendar, I'm not today, not today, but I will in the future because electronic calendaring will 10x your business, 10x your productivity and save you a lot of time, right? So are you boxing, blocking, and then pomodoring your, your, your action steps, right? I said a lot right there. So what does that mean? That means that when you choose the action steps, you now have to say, let me box the time on paper. I need to find out how much time I need because before it goes in your electronic calendar, you have to decide how long that task is going to take or that project of focus is going to take. 
Is it going to take three hours or three days? Is it going to take two weeks, a month to do it? Right? Are you decluttering a room in your house that could take you a month? Or are you working on a 30 minute project, sending out some emails? Are you making calls for two hours? Right? Or are you setting up a room in your house as a guest room? Because remember, this is life and business. So it could be errands that you want, or it could be you trying to grow your business. So whatever action steps you need to take, you need to write those out on paper. And just say, how much time does it take? If you don't know, then just guesstimate. How much time does it take to complete this particular task? You box it. If it takes three hours, hypothetically speaking, it takes three hours. So now you box that. You say, I need three hours. The question that you have to ask, Willie, the question that you have to ask, Danielle, the question that you have to ask, Wanda, is, am I going to do that three hours at one time? On, in one day, in one weekend, in one week, how are you going to spread that out? Are you going to do 25-minute sessions for that three hours? Are you going to do hour-long sessions for that three hours? How are you going to break that up? Because now you have to block the time on your electronic calendar. Hypothetically speaking, again, I'll give you an example here. If I say this is a three-hour project and I'm going to do an hour on Monday, an hour on Tuesday, an hour on Wednesday, well, I boxed it on paper and agreed that it's going to take me three hours. But now I need to block the three hours on my calendar. So I need to find an hour on Monday, an hour on Tuesday, an hour on Wednesday. And I need to block that time out on my electronic calendar so that I can use that hour to complete that portion of that, protect, of that particular preparation action step. Right? So I'm going to get that done, put it on my calendar for an hour, give myself a buffer 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. We know that we do 1.5. What is 1.5? 1.5 means however long it takes to do a task, you always multiply it by 1.5 to give yourself 50% more time than it actually takes to do it. Because as humans, we practice all the time on underestimating how long it takes to, to complete a particular task. So we want to make sure that we 1.5 everything. So give yourself 15-minute buffer before, 15-minute buffer after. So now you've blocked an hour and a half on your calendar. Because if you're going to start at 8 a.m., you're going to block 7.45 to 8.15, right? Excuse me, I'm sorry, 7.45 to 9.15, because it's supposed to be an 8 to 9 o'clock task. So 15 minutes before 8 o'clock to 7.45, 15 minutes after the 9 o'clock period, right, 8 to 9, that one hour, 15 minutes after you finish at 9, that's 9.15. Now you've got, you've done an hour worth of work. You've got a buffer of 15 minutes in the back, a buffer of 15 minutes in the front, right? So you block that time on your calendar. Now you have to decide, am I going to do this for a full hour at one time? Or am I going to palm a door in a way where I say, I'm going to do 30 minutes, take a five-minute break, and then do 30 more minutes? So now you prepare to do that, that particular project. 15 minutes ahead of time, you already have on your schedule, schedule to start. Now you prepare. Eight in the morning hits. You start that project 30 minutes after 8 o'clock. It's 8.30. You take a five-minute break. You go back to work for another 30 minutes to another 30-minute Pomodoro. Now it's 9.05. You still got 10 minutes on your clock. Because remember, you set it to 9.15. Is that making sense to everybody? I hope this cleared everybody, right? Hope I was able to get that message through in that short, short amount of time. So set your timer. Try to use a digital timer or an analog timer, one or two. Uh, I don't think there's any more, any other options but those two. But if you can get you a real actual timer in your office that you're not using your phone, it'll help for the days that you don't want to have your phone in your office. So make sure you, that you're sitting. I said 25 minutes because that's the original Pomodoro. But if you're going to use more than 25 minutes, set it to whatever time you desire. Again, if you want to know more on how to work the Pomodoro, I've got trainings that I've already done on Pomodoro. Um, and we're going to be discussing Power and Girl in more detail during the book club. Third bullet point, work on your preparation action steps until the time of and then mark the task as done. It's nothing better for your soul, nothing better for your, your, um, your endorphins. I feel, believe it's endorphins. Correct me if I'm wrong, HB, when you come back up. But there is a part of your brain that really loves for you to mark something as done. Right, I think it's your dopamine, right? Dopamine, there we go. So mark it as done on your to-do list or on your uh, electronic calendar or through your task manager. 
market is done, right? Take short five minute breaks, real breaks after 25 minutes, 20 to 30 minute break after three or four times, which you see is that last bullet point on the bottom. Work another 25 minute session as seen in step one. You can continue on this. Uh, you can continue on the same preparation step or start on the next preparation step, whichever one you want to do. So this is just walking you through how to do a Pomodoro as um, a preparation technique. So hopefully everybody got that. I'm going to move to my next uh, my, my next uh, worksheet. So just bear with me as I scoot on over here and I'm going to go ahead and click on present mode on this one as well. So we can pull this up, get through this one. So decluttering reduces procrastination. So in this one, we're talking about making sure your physical desktop is set for you to have a productive day and not procrastinate, or at least reduce the procrastination. Yes, yes. So it says organized confusion is a phrase used by most to justify their inability to organize their confusion, right? How many can agree that they've used that term before, organized confusion, right? So we say that we know where it's at, even though it looks messy to everybody else, but the fact that it looks messy, your brain is still having a problem um, focusing as much as it should because of that clutter. So you'll see uh, where it says here, clutter is strongly linked to procrastination and science shows that our brains prefer a clutter-free environment, right? If you don't believe in science, then I mean, you don't believe in science, but just understand your brain prefers a clutter-free environment. And I'm sure even if you don't believe in science, you can believe that, right? So your physical desktop organization quick hack. So I'm gonna give you five quick hacks on how to organize your desk. Now, of course, I'm gonna give you more during the book club, right? This is just a teaser, just something so that you'll see that this actually works. So schedule a routine time, first of all, to make sure that your desk stays clean. That means that you should be putting on your calendar on repeat mode, either weekly, monthly, or quarterly to make sure you declutter your office. Now your brain is not beating on your head. Boom, 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 boom. Barbara, you need to be decluttering your office. Don't forget to declutter your office, right? You don't want that to happen. You don't want your, your, your brain knocking on your head. Boom, 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 boom. Cheryl, hey, office getting kind of messy. When are you going to declutter? If you have it on your schedule to declutter, your brain won't bother you about it, right? Less anxiety. Number two, become a minimalist. That means that you only want on your desk what you need to be working on. If all you're working on is a particular project today, then you should only have that on your desk. If you're saying, no, I work on several projects today, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that. Working on several projects is too much going on. The starting and stopping the project, you're losing time, focus time, when you can get one project done and move to the next project. If you got one or two, maybe three, you could possibly get along with that. It's still slowing you down, but you can get away with it. When you start talking about working on five, six, seven, eight different things daily, you're losing a lot of time going from one project to the next project. Guess the guess? So if you have one, if you have on your desk, excuse me, if what you have on your desk it's not important in reference to what you are working on, get rid of it. So here you go, some examples. Do you have a pin on your desk or a pin holder? Because you need to get rid of the pin holder. You can put the pin holder somewhere else in your office and just grab pins out of there when you need, when that one runs out. Take your favorite pin, put that favorite pin on your desk. Here we go. This is one of my favorite pins right here. Have this on my desk, ready to go. My pin holder, somewhere else. I can access it, it's in my office, but it's not on my office desk, right? Is there a business card holder on your desk? Why is there a business card holder on your desk when you work from home? Who are you giving a card to? There's nobody there. Even if you have an office out in the public, right? You're saying, I've got an office that's in the public. Are you giving out business cards? If you are, you should have a business card holder somewhere in your office where they can grab a card or a flyer or a brochure without it being on your desk. Don't clutter your desk with that kind of stuff, right? What's the next thing? Remember, user-friendly, not pretty. So I know you can go to Amazon or you can go to some of these office uh, places and buy all this pretty office stuff. That's not the focus. The focus is getting desk organizers that will organize the things so that they're out of sight, 
but they're in a place that when you need to go in that desk organizer, you know where your staples are, your paper clips are at. All of the things that you need, you don't need them right in front of you. You need them in a desk organizer off to the side so that you've got space to do the work that you need to do on your desk. You should have a free place to write and take notes and things like that. If you're on Zooms or you're holding coaching calls or consultations with people, you should have a place to actually do your income producing activity, do the processes that it takes you to get your business to work, right? What's another one, right? Um, last one, because I already did the paper clips, right? Get a storage cabinet. Get a storage cabinet, put it in your office or somewhere, something to put your paper for your printer and all that kind of stuff. Make sure those things are out of sight. You should be looking at nothing but what you need to, to finish these projects. The more focused your brain can stay on the things that's needed to complete that project, the easier it is for your brain to help you complete that project. Does that make sense? Right? Keep relative items grouped together. What does that mean? That means that anything that goes together in the same product project, keep them in the same place together so that you're not looking in different places for different things. You lose time doing that. Even when it's on your computer, which we'll have that conversation at another time. Keep your folders in a hierarchy situation where you've got subfolders with material that goes with the original master folder there. Same thing here. Color code, do things with your folders and your compartments and your file cabinets or whatever you're holding thing, wherever you're holding your projects at, make sure every relative thing to that project, every relative document to that project is in the same place. That helps things work out for you. Sticky notes are not a to-do list. That's your next bullet point. Sticky notes, post-it notes, that it could be our worst enemy because we have them lined up along the side of our monitors or our computer on our um, screens for our for our laptops, right? We have sticky notes all over the place. I'm looking at sticky notes right now as I talk to you. Look, I've got an entire Ziploc bag full of sticky notes, guys, right? I've got another sticky note pad right here in front of me. Sticky notes are not a to-do list. That is for a sense of urgency, I mean, sense of urgency things. So if I'm going through my day and my business partner calls me and says, hey, look, we need to do a call uh, within the next hour because something just came up with the project we're working on and we really need to discuss it. Can you can you can can we can we talk with it within the next hour? You know what? Let me go ahead and write that down. I write that down on my sticky notes so it's in my face. This is a current thing that needs to happen within the next 60 minutes. It's a sense of urgency. I'm putting it on a sticky note so it stays top of mind so I can get that knocked out because it's an alteration to my day. This is not a to-do list. Things that need to happen tomorrow or the next day or next week or reminders. Those go on calendars. That's for task managers. There are places that you can put that stuff, right? So make sure that you use notifications, right, instead of sticky notes. Use your email, calendar, task management notifications. You can use cloud-based apps like Google Docs or Apple Notes or Evernote or places like that. You can also use action lists like to-do lists, process goal lists, things like that to put down events, reminders, tasks, don't use sticky notes today. Yes or yes? Hope I ain't hurt you guys too bad. Last one, this is business, not personal. And I already kind of led into this earlier uh, before I put the PDF up where I said things like um, pictures of the family, things like um, your last your uh, vacation that you went on, those things should not be on your desk. We all know these things are important to us, but they can also become cluttered as you see here. So those are some bullet points that help you uh, out with your desk. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here now. So guys, look, uh, I hope this, hopefully this information has been beneficial to you. I know that we're here. Brent said it was, uh, uh, was beneficial to you. Practice the circles. Practice all the things that he talked about doing. Practice what I just mentioned to you guys here. Look at the mindset um, that we're, that look how we're adding to your mindset to do certain things, certain exercises to get past this procrastination, right? And we're doing these in these small pregame sets. Uh, I've mentioned already uh, what it takes to get involved in a book club. Uh, if anybody has any questions, there's a link uh, in the chat that talks about uh, that and in the email. If you got this from YouTube or got the email with this, this video, there's a link that set a consultation to talk about the book club if you have questions. The book club is $24.97 a month if you want to be involved, no contract, or you can do $59 per episode. For us, an episode is eight weeks with a particular book. 
So when that book is coming, if you say, I want to pay $59 and I want to be on for that book, you can be in our private community and you can, you can participate in that eight weeks of training and coaching on that particular book. Or you can say, look, I'm all in. It's $300 a year to be in the book club if you pay $24.97 a month. But if you're going to pay for it in advance, we're going to charge you $249, which gives you a $50 in savings. And so for $249, you have put yourself in a position where you can learn on a weekly basis from a coach that coaches in life, a coach that coaches in business and have that synergistic uh, situation going on there when it comes to that. So guys, look, we're going to be timing off here now. I've, I believe I've said enough for tonight. I, I believe Coach Harold Branch has said enough tonight. If not, he can chime in and say whatever else he needs to say. Look, the book club link is there. The consultation is there if you want to talk about it before you join it. And if you say, nope, I'm not going to do any of those things. I'm just going to hang out with you guys for the pregame for the next two weeks. Um, and learn there, go ahead and do that. No love lost. Look, it's up to you. You do whatever you feel best, whatever works better for you. These processes that we're doing now here are free. The book club, I talked about the cost of that, and there's no contact to any of that, guys. So we look forward to seeing you guys next week on session two, where we're going to talk about creative procrastination. How to pr procrastinate on things that you can afford to procrastinate on to feed that urge of procrastination. So we're going to be talking about that next week. Uh, Coach Branch and Coach Dunbar. Look, guys, we're signing off. This is part of the deep dive book club series. This is our pre-game um, series for stopping procrastination. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Stopping procrastination for 2023. We're going to go ahead and sign off here. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. And we look forward to seeing you guys on, in a book club when it starts January 17th. And remember, it's two days a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. You can join both days if you want to. It doesn't matter. Get on as much as you want to. Once you pay in that, that cost, you can come see us as much as you want on those actual videos. It will not be recorded. The book club will not be recorded. So you have to get on the sessions to get the information. So Robert Dunbar signing off. Harold Branch, if you got anything else to say, go ahead and take it away. If not, we will see you guys all next week. Peace.